Nice to see you again. Yeah. I've been studying you about 15 years now. Yeah. And things are going very well. In fact, yeah. I was hoping I could tell you how well things are going. So, <laughs> I've got this business. Every time you feel exhilaration, we know. <laughs> we know they're going well sometimes before you even know they're going well, but we really like it when you know they're going well. <laughs> so you wanted to tell us that you know they're going well and we already knew they were going well but we like hearing it from you because we like you knowing that they're going well yeah I realized they were going they were going well for a long time before I realized they were going well and uh, my mm. business I was that's the most important statement of this day <laughs> well-being has been surrounding me even in my ignorance of it yeah <laughs> Yes. And so the business, I was afraid I might not be able to come today because the business that I have, we're expanding the space and we're able to break through the back wall and double the space. I mean, what were the odds of that? And I'm, I'm hundred percent, but, <laughs> but then that's just us. We've got a sort of special point of view. It's just so one and things are going so well at a show of my work. You know, I checked the bank account, got 15,000 in the bank account. And it's just, you know, when I started with you 15 years ago, I would listen to the tape and they were tapes back then. I'd be good for 15 minutes. And it's like a slow flat tire. And uh, now things are going so much better. And I've got 120 hours being of people being helped a week with neurofeedback. And I'm just running it. And I'm there about three hours a week and I'm able to do my artwork. I'm able to do these other projects. Are you explaining to us that through your connection, you've leveraged your time in a productive way? Yes. Yeah. And I was yeah. so yeah. looking forward to telling you that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what I'm wondering is some people don't get back to me and I'm not sure at a certain point, should I, call them up and go, you know, you said it was two weeks. It's been six weeks, you know, uh, where are we at? The question that you want to ask yourself is what influence are you under when you notice they haven't called you back? Well, here's where I'm at. Well, now I, we ask you okay. a question. We think you should answer. <laughs> what I'm not sure how to answer. Well, if you flash back on that feeling of wanting to call someone, was it from a place of anxiety or from a place of eagerness? You can tell by the way you feel what influence you're under when you want to make the call. Yeah. Is I, it shortage consciousness or is it anticipating wonderful things? Is it about your desire to co-create with them or is it about irritation or even concern? Irritation. Yeah. So don't call them. Okay. <laughs> because no good's going to come from that. You'll just make them defensive and make them explain things and make them practice not calling you longer in their vibration interesting that you're bringing this up but we want to give this to you because sometimes an example it fleshes things out in a powerful way so Esther heard from someone who heard it from someone who heard it from someone that her man who cleans her swimming pool on the property where the offices are in Texas hadn't been coming and it was a problem and the person who talked to the person who talked to the person was wondering if they should look for someone else. This information came to Esther while she was flying high. She had such a sense of well-being that was surrounding her that when that information came to her, it didn't come directly from a person. It was diffused because it came from this person who had heard it from this person who had heard it from this person. And so it was just this little soft light thing. So Esther just hung up the phone and touched his number on her iPhone and got his voice message and she said hey it's Esther I haven't talked to you in a long time I understand that you haven't been around for a little while and that's okay that magnificent pool is promoting itself pretty well but just want to make sure everything's good with you give me a call when you got a minute to talk and all's good here eight minutes later he called her back and expressed to her 
what was going on which was completely understandable Nestor said well no worries you'll get it back together we've been having this experience long enough just get over there and get some chemicals in it so that we don't lose our balance and then tend to the rest of it when you get a chance and so everything's back on track now what we're getting at is the light touch that Esther offered she wasn't worried she wasn't mad she wasn't disappointed she wasn't trying to get any strong behavior from him she just was making contact just to renew their positive relationship you see what we're getting at? Yeah. Yeah. but it was easy for her to do that because she was all tuned in tapped in turned on anyway she wouldn't be able to do anything else and isn't it nice that the universe brings information to you in meaningful times when you're feeling like that so that the inspiration in other words every word out of Esther's mouth they talked for 45 minutes and he said this is the best conversation I've ever had I wish that I'd called you two months ago Esther's never had a conversation with him that's not the kind of relationship they have he drives up she waves she doesn't even usually go outside she gives him thumbs up he does his thing he goes they don't have a relationship except that they both have mutual love and appreciation for the balance of her swimming pool <laughs> so what was that all about that was not just about the chemical balance in the pool this was about the vibrational balance between them it was also about the vibrational balance in him so what better opportunity for someone to help somebody with their vibrational balance than when you are in perfect vibrational balance you see what we're getting yes. at yes. so the moral of this story is never call anyone when you're in a bad mood never call anyone when you have awareness that you have a problem never call anyone never talk to anyone from a place of disappointment because they're probably staying away from you because they already know you're disappointed maybe not in a business relationship of sales so much but certainly in a relationship of employees or family or loved ones if someone who wants to be tuned in tapped in turned on which is 100 percent of you has an awareness that you're a little disappointed in them in some way they don't want to have a conversation with you where your disappointment is enhanced so get yourself into the place that you know you want to feel and feel it and feel it and feel it and feel it until the universe hooks you up and gives you both what you want doesn't that make perfect sense in light of what you know what's going on in your minds are you thinking about the relationships that you could improve by first improving your relationship with your inner being it's powerful we don't believe that any of you would go into your great big carpeted room and vacuum it or use your vacuum contraption without first plugging it in you could go through the motions you could run that thing all over the place you could leave tracks everywhere and anybody watching you from outside with no sound would say "Ooh, really doing a good job on that carpet <laughs> getting down everywhere moving all the chairs vacuuming everywhere but if you haven't plugged it in you're not getting the job done and that's how it is with your relationship with source energy if you're not plugged into that you're not getting the job done that you intend good point good point I was having a meeting somebody on Monday and um, he doesn't return his phone calls and I want to give him this nice piece of business but sometimes he doesn't return phone calls for three you know what days. the people that are the busiest are those that you most want to be in business with in other words if somebody is just sitting around waiting for somebody to call them so that they can call them back they might not have a lot going on <laughs> but somebody who's got a lot going on is someone that when you partner up they're going to focus with you don't make up stuff to support your worry make up stuff to support your desire haven't you heard the expression we know you've lived it if you want something done find a busy person and ask them to do it don't ask somebody that doesn't have anything to do to do it they won't get around to that either <laughs> and so he doesn't return his phone calls it may be because he wants to make the calls it may be that he wants to get all of his ducks in a row first it may be that he's waiting for more inspiration it may be that he's not tuned in tapped in turned on and he's not feeling the inspiration from source and so this isn't a good time for you to rendezvous with him it may be that your inner being is talking to his inner being and your inner being is telling his inner being wait until he's in a good mood and then ask him to answer this call we're not kidding do you want somebody to call you and say oh yeah I've been meaning to get back to you no the answer to your question is no if you push someone for an answer before they are in alignment before they're ready to give you something that they want they will always tell you no 
Give them a chance to say yes, which means give them a chance to line up. But there's this thing. There's this thing that humans do. And we love you so much. We don't mean humans. We mean humans. We mean it's this thing that humans do, especially in sales where you believe that you want to get hold of someone and you want to hold them tight because if you don't hold them tight they're going to wiggle away from you and you're going to lose your opportunity that's the basis of what most people believe in sales and you know what that really is the more you hold them the more they squirm to get away because what they really want is the freedom to choose and when you've got an intention for someone and you hold them tight they want to wiggle away they'll wait to return they'll wait the attitude that you want to have about that is that I have something so good for you that's going to enhance your experience so much and when the timing is right for you I know that we'll make contact and meanwhile I wish you well in whatever it is that you've got going on okay don't you know that from yourself have you ever had somebody after you to make a decision doesn't matter who it is maybe it's a lover when someone's after you for a decision that you're not ready to make don't you want to run from them don't you tend to give them lip service don't you make up stuff my dog ate my homework kind of stuff you just make stuff up but if you're tuned in tapped in turned on and you're in vibrational alignment with your inner being and therefore with their inner being oh when the timing's right you'll get the impulse they might only be in a good mood one hour out of every day that's when the impulse will hit you to call them but if you're worried about them not returning your call and you feel like you should call them you'll call them at a bad time every time and you should see their phone you should see all the people they don't call back <laughs> and it's not personal it's what overwhelmment feels like it's everybody wanting something from me that I'm not ready to give that's what that feels like but everybody has desires and everybody has desires that could dovetail with yours you just got to give them a chance to know it you see yeah play with that you're gonna like it so much you'll find yourself saying to people yeah I was gonna call you back but I just didn't feel like it <laughs> and they'll say I beg your pardon yeah I kept feeling like I should call you and then I realized it's because I was worried about you or I was disappointed or something and so I've got in the habit of never calling anyone unless it feels like a really good idea to call them and so it's been a few months but here I am <laughs> they'll laugh they'll get it and they'll say yeah I've been really busy I broke my foot or 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 I went bankrupt and now I've recovered <laughs> or 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 yeah enough I think so can I fine-tune in any way that I'm not aware of um, am I things seem to be going really well I'm just wondering since we're both here yeah you're um, trying too hard <laughs> <laughs> okay you're a little too action-oriented all right you're not operating only from inspiration you're operating out of habit of what good businessmen do some of it's good advice to yourself and some of it isn't but all of it falls under the umbrella of trying a little bit too hard and what that falls under the umbrella of is wanting to be productive and effective and a good businessman rather than wanting to be happy and free and flowing and experiencing the assistance of the universe and what that's under the umbrella of is I need to prove myself to someone as compared to those that I don't need to present a good image to already love me hear that if you're trying to perform for the accolades of others who might watch you humans do that all the time but your inner being is not asking for that from you and it's hard for you to make that transition it's hard to accept that my inner being adores me no matter what and as you get that stuck in your vibrational craw then you stop performing for anyone you just allow what you've already asked for to flow in it's this cooperative dance that you do with your inner being does that make sense to you and that's why we said so there is not being quite sure that all is really well with you and then beneath that is wanting to do a really good job for whoever's watching which isn't required from your inner being which means you're catering more to humans who have been using a flawed premise for the relationship with you and then beneath that is wanting to go through the proper motions that you've learned from others who are in business in other words there's a big difference between what are the appropriate business steps 
and what would feel the best for me to do right now and people fear because you've watched things from a flawed premise criteria people fear and this is right at the heart of what you fear since you have